afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Kirsty Dignam and I'm here as always to look at the collective energies this week. I found it really important to wait until the afternoon or rather to wait for the morning to be over. Now this feels very applicable to my own circumstances but to the collective energies at present. Even though there is much change occurring in regards to our own image, our own self image, our own vision, my own included, highlights, new camera, new workspace, there are still things to be put into place. There are still releases occurring and it feels as if we are not quite there yet. Now I personally found that quite frustrating about three or four weeks ago when the guidance I personally received was to wait until the end of July. That doesn't mean we can't put things in place for when we are free to do what it is we are here to do. Because every step that we take on the journey, although they may not feel like it, are relevant to where it is we are aiming to get to. It reminds me of the song in Frozen 2, for those that have seen it, take, taking the next right step. And that feels very poignant for the energies this week. The other thing that clearly came through this morning was to not delve into the vibration collectively too deep. Um, to tread lightly, to tread gently, not just on the belly of our mother, but on our own path and to keep it as hopeful, I guess, as possible. Because underneath everything it is that that moves us forward, not blind faith, not structure or control, but hope in ourself and in our own evolution as a species. It feels very deep. It feels as if the changes are beyond human level changes, but that doesn't mean that we can't do our part. So for that reason, I am going to look at the cards, see how we can best navigate the energy and then leave it at that. The guidance that came through this morning was to be aware of the message, but not to become it. Okay, so whatever comes to light this week in particular in regards to how we saw ourselves or even the world around us, our images are changing. The image of a nation is developing something beyond just about us. So as always, take that that is relevant and let go of that which isn't applicable. We can choose what we decide to carry and we can choose our own mindset you know and with that that's where freedom ultimately comes from so i'm very aware in the uk <clears throat> we are awaiting the next steps regarding lockdown and you know if my own guidance is anything to go by it does feel as if there will be delays with that but that there is a bigger picture behind it <sighs> what i'm sensing is how much have we changed yeah, what have we gained throughout this whole period in regards to A, the sources we put our power into and B, our own freedom and our own view of it and our own chains. So leading up to next year, the lover and the devil year, it does really feel as if the freedom of choice will ultimately come back to us. It may not seem that way at the moment. But it is divine will. We choose what we do with the information we are given and how we interpret it based upon our actions. And that feels very poignant this week. So taking my own advice, I'm not going to dive too deep into what isn't relevant as such to, to myself. And what I'm looking at is a picture above my computer. And there's, there's dirt on the glass. It needs cleaning. Yeah, that... that that window, that potential does need cleaning. But what I can actually see is little dots and specks and they look very similar to the binary code, the one nought, one nought, one nought. And it really does feel as if things are being created by seeing the dirt this week in particular. My own husband woke up in the middle of the night last night and it was his physical needs hunger and, and being too hot and things like that that woke him up and what I really sense when things don't go to plan 
is this huge influx, this huge desire to wake people up um, without trusting that our own needs will do that ultimately and that it's different for everyone. So looking back over the last year, what have we learned? What have we woke to truly behind the mourning, behind the grief of what was? Because if we are still, yeah, no, I want to say still, because there's a double-barreled meaning in that. And that feels quite poignant this week. The energies that come up will have double-barreled meanings behind them. But if there is still the same reaction, have we moved forward or have we stayed still? But the other side of it is also being present. It's very difficult when we want things to move forward and it isn't quite time for whatever reason. But we still have a choice in that moment. We still have a choice in our actions and how we choose to see the world. Anything that makes us believe otherwise, ourselves included, they're the real people that hold the keys to our imprisonment. So really, really looking, really looking at our own light this week and how we may have trapped it. When we finally let go, when the morning is over, we can see what it is that's been waiting for us all this time. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to just, if it's very relevant to keep in the heart space this week in particular, so I'm just going to stretch my back. The card that came up this morning was the Ten of Wands and looking at the oh, things that we've carried that aren't ours to carry any longer and to actually let them go. Okay, so sometimes this this month, this month I really feel Archangel Michael's energy and the truth coming to light and sometimes we can feel as if it is our role to highlight that, to defend that, to at times push that, but truth is individual for everybody and it is in the individual's perspective and therefore it is up to them to find their own truth so what i'm really feeling this week is to keep coming back to the heart to find your own truth because it is a double-edged sword i see michael's flaming sword and it is a double-edged sword Now I can understand the binary message. For for me, the binary code has always been about action and inaction, on switch, off switch. And it is really being aware of what we are tuning into this week and what we are tuning out from this week in order to create what it is we are trying to achieve. So if we hear something or see something that isn't in particular resonating with our own dreams, switch off to it. That's going to cause some knee-jerk reactions, our own included, but sit with that. Sit with that. Where is that coming from? Be still with that. Have you changed? Okay, so energies this week. I'm looking at the word addition and I can really feel my throat chakra going and really feel my womb chakra going and just this real sense of news coming up that may not be pleasant, may not be quite what it was we wanted and that could result in some very risky action, some gambling if you will. Okay. Monday, huh? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday. So as I was laying out the cards, I really felt like I needed to take a deep breath and step back to see the bigger vision. So I love the fact that the card overall for this week is actually the star taking that step back from the situation, breathing, seeing the bigger vision here. Only taking, oh, you can't see from my light. Look at that, so much light, the star card, only seeing what we need from the past now and taking that forward. Letting the rest go. 
concentrating on what's in front of us this week, our emotions, dipping our toe in what's going on collectively but not drowning in it. So today, Monday, I feel like I need to pause, I need to address my own needs, drink from my own cup. <laughs> and I can hear almost like the British mentality, nothing a good cup of tea wouldn't sort. Monday, we do have the Ten of Wands, so the card that came up today, originally for my own personal guidance, has also come up for the collective energy. And again, it is looking at what it is we are carrying. We're nearly there. But what it is we are carrying and the truth that this holds us in lockdown, that this stops our ability to see. You can see my camera's actually struggling to focus every time I move. Really looking at what is blocking our ability to see the bigger vision this week, to see the bigger perspective of what's actually going on. We can get very understandably caught up in our own needs and caught up in how things affect us. Excuse me. I can hear the phrase there for the greater good go I. Okay, so really, really concentrating on what brings you strength, what helps you move forward, and how you can share that with others rather than almost being blinded by all the things we can't do. Laying down those ten of wands, picking the one that runs through it, and moving forward with that this week. On the Tuesday, the two, oh, <laughs> the two of Swords. I don't know if you can see that card. So having peace now, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The eye being eye of the beholder and how we see things. And you can see here that this woman is blindfolded, but the vision comes from her heart. She is aware that there are two swords. She is aware that there are two sides to every story. And she's holding them both. She is holding space for both on the Tuesday in particular, whilst her emotions are present, but in the background. And again, it's really going back to that dipping our toe, not going too deep this week. So taking my own advice, I'm moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday, we have temperance for the minor arc minor the major arcana I don't know if you can see that card again it's that light all I can see is the light all around her head and all around her third eye and that vision I just want you to be able to see that she is also merely dipping her toe there okay so with temperance on the Wednesday I'm being really drawn to look at her wings really drawn to look at the fact that they are red red is our root chakra our bloodline our connection to the earth and that feels very poignant this week my own guidance has been to really connect to Pachamama for she has much to share over the next few weeks with her children really really grounding really really connecting you know We've all experienced lockdown from different perspectives and there isn't enough time in the world to look through all of these from a completely unbiased level. All I can do is share my experience of that. Not for the hope of changing the views of others, not for getting just solely my point across, but this is my experience. And that feels very relevant for the Wednesday to share our experiences for what they are, our experiences our connection to the earth for me personally yes i have found coronavirus and everything that has come with it particularly difficult i've also acknowledged the fact that it has really connected me to the earth it has really made me slow down to find my own rhythm to witness to observe life When I look at temperance, I see the crown in the background. And again, yes, there is that sovereignty, but corona um, <coughs> virus, corona in Spanish actually means crown. Okay, so it feels more like an infection or has for me felt more like an infection in regards to our connection to source and who we are and the impact that that has had on our health. 
So slowing down, being, embracing the stillness. On the Wednesday, and in particular this week, has really aided our ability to fly. And it might not feel like that. Yeah, understandably, restrictions may not feel like that. But when we pause, when we step into the void of the unknown, there are great answers to be found there. So on Temperance Chest is the triangle, and the triangle in Peruvian medicine symbolizes the masculine and the feminine. And Temperance is holding two cups, which is the flow. And that feels, I just felt the whole of my right side just relax. And that feels very relevant in taking this new way of working with both energies as one forward now because on the Thursday it's the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Swords is actually looking back at Temperance almost attacking almost attacking Temperance with his truth his sword can't see the horse here which is very interesting his truth his sword my way or the highway <sighs> we may need to reflect on that we may need to almost go backwards this week and look at our actions and the thought processes behind them in particular in regards to freedom um, and how to move forward and it does feel like we will be greeted with temperance here by looking backwards now temperance can come in many forms you know she can come in setbacks with the government she can come in or he sorry temperance is non-gender can come in possible dis-ease you know that need to rest that need to be she can come from joy as well this energy can come up through joy and I have noticed I'm saying the word she a lot and again I want to go back to the divine feminine not in terms of gender but in terms of connection to the earth Pachamama the female the earth mother I can hear the song by Apologies, I can't remember the um, artist. Oh, it might be Chris Brown, but it's slow down. And I can hear the, f uh, the lyrics, the beginning lyrics, slow down, I just want to get to know you. It feels very poignant for Wednesday and Thursday, and I can feel the grounded energy just trying to bring me right down to earth. Um, so there may be something round about Wednesday or Thursday that really brings us back to earth with a bit of a bolt but it's an opportunity to slow down to really get to know ourselves and each other and the earth and our surroundings and ultimately then what it is we're striving for then what it is we're riding towards you know the knight of swords is actually facing back over the indecisions over the overwhelm but temperance stands before him and then past that is the star. So whatever comes up Wednesday or Thursday in particular feels like it will help with the bigger vision that is going on. Because on the Friday we have the Three of Cups. We have that celebration. We have that birth, that cheering almost, moving forward here, raising a glass. You know grief and mourning of what was can be quite an arduous I'm just looking at the eight pentacles right next to it. it can be quite an arduous task it can be hard work if done from the angle of loss loss of freedom loss of control loss of a loved one loss of a job if it's done from the perspective of loss which is human nature and part and parcel one of the many swords that we hold but if it's solely done from this point, we lose hope. If everything is seen as a loss, we start to really lose that hope of things ever changing and we start to really lose the bigger vision and everything becomes overwhelming and we, come, we can become blinded to what it is we are witnessing. Friday's energy suggests that we celebrate what was. I'm really sensing perhaps a rites of passage ceremony a getting together safely according to whatever guidelines may be coming through in the next few days but really celebrating what was 
not from the perspective perspective of loss but from what we have gained who we have discovered what we have learned about ourselves we have still survived yeah many have thrived we have as a species adapted changed looked out for each other I was pretty shocked the other day at how quickly that had changed uh, coming across a very verbal, verbally aggressive person because I'd put my indicator on wrong. Um, you know, it was only a year ago that everybody was helping each other, but I have to hold hope. It's not personal. None of us know what each other is going through and it, you have to hold on to that hope. You have to celebrate the hope and the joy and the laughter wherever it is you can find it this week in particular because it is almost that that will help us observe what is going on and move forward. We have been through so much and we may not quite be there yet, but I guess it's the difference between surviving and thriving. We can look back over the last year and everything that has happened and we can look at it from a perspective of loss, which is absolutely normal and almost compassionate you know it's part of the process but if we stay there the way that we move forward could really cloud the bigger picture here and what it is we could hopefully achieve if we look back over all the things that we have gained community spirit strength support oneness you know coronavirus it didn't discriminate you know, it brought many of us all back together. Online teachings and learnings and ceremony and support and new ways of working, new ways of being. If we can really look back over that and take that energy forward, it really feels like it's going to make a difference to the weekend in particular. At the weekend, we have the Eight of Pentacles and the work is beginning. It is beginning. But the stage that we're at depends on how we see what it is we've already done. <laughs> so I can't even see the person in the car up there. All I can see is the pentacles, the money. Now I can't even see this. Ah, there he is. This person that's done all this hard work. So maybe really looking at our own impact on the world. I really feel that in the last year or so, the difference that we've made, seeing our role, really, really looking at what it is we have added to, what it is we have built in who we are and what it is we have shared. Because on the Sunday, we're almost being asked, what well, one thing are we ready to take forward now? What are we holding on to? Why are we holding on to it? Is it that we need to take that forward? Has it been our foundation? Has it been our grounding? Is it in alignment? I don't know if you can see that card at all. Is it in alignment with the bigger vision? Does it bring you hope? Faith, charity, love. Does it sing to your soul or does it make life hard? Does it make you have to be on the go all the time? And if that suits you, fantastic. If it doesn't, is it time to look at this now? It almost feels like it's time to be your own midwife. Okay, so being aware of the collective, but really, really connecting to what it is you are trying to birth. What it is you are trying to build. What it is you can celebrate. Your own thought process behind it. And your ability to see beyond everything that you are holding on to, to the vision behind it all. So, overall, two major arcanas, the star and temperance, and they are together, such gorgeous energy. Okay, so I've swapped them around. <laughs> it was originally no, I haven't. My camera has done it. Okay. It's a backwards, forwards thing, quite literally this week, but my camera has swapped the images around. It really doesn't matter what comes first. It really doesn't matter whether it's the big vision that sparks our ability to manifest or our need to move forward towards the big vision that sparks our ability to manifest this week. 
they are one and the same. The only difference here, I hear what is the only difference? I was going to say the only difference here is one is naked, raw and human and the other one has wings and is almost a celestial being. But I'm looking at the crown in the background and as I'm about to say the only difference, I hear what is the only difference? What is the difference between what it is we are seeking and where we are? Our ability to be raw, our ability to acknowledge our own sovereignty here, our own divinity here. I'm really connected to that energy this week. So there's two major arcana, so it does feel very supported by the feminine. A real coming together, a real almost soul birth here this is what i want to say almost a vision of a real higher perspective and it may not seem like it it may seem the complete opposite when we look at our environment when we look at what is actually going on no i will say supposedly going on around us it is about realizing that the camera will always show it from a different angle and it will always show it in reverse order and backwards Okay, so whatever is being reflected back this week, really acknowledging that it's almost a backward image now. So in regards to minor arcana, in regards to our human journey, our the things we can influence as such, although again I hear what is the difference, our very actions influence the world that is being dreamed, that is being brought to light. And it feels very, yeah, I can feel that energy. <laughs> I can feel Michael. It feels very important to acknowledge our role in the creators of the world we are trying to birth. It feels very important to acknowledge our own divinity and the truth of this this week and to not be distracted by stories outside or internally that may make us question this. Think back to how far you have come. Think back to all the things you have discovered and celebrate the birth of who you are now and move forward with this. Very, very strong energies this week. Thank you very much. Yes, you are the hope that you're looking for. You always have been, you always will be. And whenever we ask for guidance, whether it's the tarot, whether it's externally whether it's angelic beings or loved ones or everyday signs and synchronicities this is what is reflected back to us that the answers have always been within so we have one one card two sword cards one cup card and two pentacle cards wands and cups individually okay so the ten of wands but one wand card overall really looking at your own spirit here and your own connection to spirit here and really seeing how whatever it is you have been carrying is potentially blocking your view from that you know we can get very caught up in we can't do this we can't do that and that comes from a real limited perspective that comes from a lockdown of our potential that is actually, <laughs> I'm going to say it, done by ourselves. Okay, now I know that it may mean we may not be able to socialise as much as we like in person, but we can do it on the internet. There are ways and means around this, but if we are so busy holding on to the things that we can't do from this real limited perspective, we are not going to see answers beyond what is in front of us. And when what is in front of us is reflected back from a level of backwardsness, backward energy, that is all we are going to see, which is going to become very overwhelming this week unless we dare to blindfold ourselves to what no longer resonates and go deep into our heart and listen to our emotions in the background, listen to the waters. Okay, so one one card, but we also have one cup card. And it's the Three of Cups, celebrating who you are, celebrating your emotions, celebrating your divinity, celebrating your connection to Source. 
Okay, so yes, in the Two of Swords, we do have emotions behind us, but this is also the collective consciousness. This is also the stream of potential. Really celebrating our connection and drinking from this now. Okay, we have another two cups on here. Really drinking from our connection now. <clears throat> two sword cards, so balance there. Okay, so we have the two of swords and the knight of swords really being balanced to old patterned thought processes and beliefs within and around us. Again, being blinded, feet on the ground, really connecting and being open to that connection, finding your seat in this world and then moving forward. Okay. It's almost as if my mind went blank when I looked at the pentacles and that feels a very poignant pause physically pause you know when you're working take a moment to breathe to pause when you're outside it's a it's an honor to live in the moment not one that many whether they have passed or not get to experience cherish that cherish that gift hold on to that gift in all that you do being really present this week is going to make the difference the balance between what could be hard work or what could be quite structured and fruitful that's the word i hear fruitful is there anything in one more card? Ah, okay. <laughs> so I'm looking at the Four of Pentacles and the first card that springs to mind is the Emperor. Um, and I ask if there's one more card in regards to hope and lo and behold, it is the Emperor. Now I know we are in the Hierophant year. There still feels some energy left over from the Emperor. There still feels... You know, the Emperor is the other side of death. There still feels almost that transformation of what was. Those lessons that are still there to be cultivated, that are still there to be harvested. This does remind me of certain political powers. This does remind me of, I don't know if you can see, you just can't see. Okay, there's something in that, almost like just can't see who's in control here. Well, the Empress says it's you. Yeah, we are in control of how we see the world. We are in control of how we live this life. I love the fact that the Emperor almost has an ankh in his hand here and the spray for hope, which I'll put a link to for Amanda Ellis's sprays, has the ankh on there as well. That life-giving force, that's what hope is. It almost feels like a time to go beyond seeing love, charity, faith, hope as watery concepts, really seeing them as the strength that they are. Through every endurance we've ever had in our lives, it is that that has drawn us forward. For every moment of blindness, it is that that we have connected to. For everything that we have fought for or felt like we needed to fight for, behind it was the hope of what we were trying to achieve everything we've celebrated contains this every job we do every step we take everything that we make there is hope behind it i could hear the song by sting then everything we do every step we take is that i'll be missing you i'll be watch. i'll be watching you yeah really 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 connecting to that and holding on to hope now i hear holding out for a hero <laughs> so many songs going around in my head which can only mean that sandalphon is with me again it's that grounding energy really grounding into your earth star chakra this week going beyond the earth going beyond your root chakra going beyond your feet right down into the earth and beyond um because just by mentioning it with an intention i can feel myself going right down you know connecting to many different levels be 
before me. Yes, that is what I want to say, many different levels before me. Okay, and often when we see ourselves as having to stop, that can almost be perceived as a weakness or an inconvenience or a restriction. It can be one of the most valuable things we ever do. Because by stopping, by pausing, by connecting to these many levels in one moment before us, we see the bigger vision, we know how to move forward and we observe it from a enlightened perspective. I think that's all there is to add really. Um, yeah, there's. I really sense that there is no point looking for more. There is no point looking for more, almost like it is not going to give you any more clarity this week. <laughs> no matter how much you search for answers or try to find different versions of different stories and different ways to move forward, this video included. Ultimately, it is the vision that you hold in your heart. It is the vision that strives you forward. It is your seat and your place here that will be your guidance and your midwife now. So really, really trusting that this week. And that's all I have to say. Take care.